All right, everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I'm in the field, and today I'm working on a treadmill, or more specifically, a cardiac stress tester. So let's go through. Uh, this is the GE, the T2100. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so the T2100, it's a cardiac stress test. What it does is it measures your heart and it records a normal resting cardiorhythm. And then what it does is it puts you through some stress and it watches as your heart compensates for this type of stress. And it does so quite well. So this is a GE unit. They're gonna be very similar on all the different ones, um, but I'm gonna show you the control panel, how to run it, some of the things I do during the PM, and uh, we'll go from there, all right? Let's do it. All right, so here you go. This is the treadmill. And if I remember right, the treadmill is a 220 volt and the console is 120 volt and it also has separate power for what is a blood pressure analyzer. Some of them have the blood pressure, some of them don't, uh, but here we go. So this is the treadmill and I already lubricated the belt in this area. So mind you, it's going to move and because it's got to move, then we got to do this multiple times. So one of the first things I do when I walk up to one of these treadmills is I push against the bar and you, what you want to make sure is that the treadmill is locked. It's got a locking motor and you should not get any movement in the belt. If you do, the electromagnetic clutches are worn out and the machine is not going to pass anyway because what it does, it stops the belt and it locks it. That way there the patient won't fall because if a patient's holding on to the railing and the belt is still moving, yeah, you know, due to their pushing on it, then the patient will fall. So first test is going to be to check the belt locking system. And I already sprayed uh, silicone lubricant underneath the belt. So one of the things I do is I come over and almost always you're going to have a patient called test. And we're going to... I've already hit the pre-test button, which brought me into here. Um, some of the things that you're going to have to put in for your patient, your test patient, is going to be his age, his height, because that's going to give you um, a static measurement for your patient. All right. So you can see here, I'm kind of set up. It's ready to go. Here, let's click OK. And what we do is we walk through the buttons left to right. So you got new patient, you have pretest, then you have exercise, and then you have test end. And over here are going to be your treadmill speeds up and down, your incline, you're going to start the treadmill and stop the treadmill here. So this is a process that is done with the technician standing here while the patient is doing their thing. So one of the other things that I noticed about this treadmill and some of the others is that this guy right here was all the way down at the end of the pole. This is your e-stop button. And an emergency button is an emergency item. It cannot be the furthest location from you because what do I gotta do, reach way way down here to hit that? It, the e-stop should be up here so the patient or the person treating the patient can smack the e-stop if anything goes wrong whatsoever. It will lock the belt and this guy shuts down immediately. So the e-stop, one of the first things I do is I move it all the way up here and re-secure it so it's nice and stable. And I check the rail to make sure that the rail is nice and tight. And then we start our run. So I've already done new patient called test. I've done the preliminary. And you can see there I have a 60 BPM set up right here with my Fluke 614 ESA. So we're running. I do have some leads that have some little nicks in the silicone, so I've already requested replacement leads for this guy. We're good there. All right, and so one of the next things I do after I start my pretest is then we start the treadmill, Boop. which of course it's not going to do. Uh, let's do exercise. Okay, there we go. Exercise. We're good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise it up and take a look underneath it. Uh, look for loose components, anything that might be underneath the treadmill. And you also want to listen for squealing bearings because there's a large roller here. There's a large roller down there. All right. 
So you're going to listen for squealing bearings, which this one here is clear. And we're going to check the tracking on the belt. The tracking on the belt is the skew going left to right, and that can be adjusted down here at the tail. You can see right here, it's not moving all over the place. It's good. I'm checking the belt for wear. You can see this belt here is perfect on the two edges. What will happen is if it has a history of skew problems, that you'll see an edge that's a little frayed. So this belt here is good. We're going to check, check the motor for lag and for stall, which, whoa, <laughs> this one is definitely not doing either. So uh, it's good. We're good. Um, I'm going to get on the treadmill. I'm going to walk. That's going to spread some of the lubricant, and then I'm going to re-lubricate it walk again and then I'm going to run the incline up and down check and make sure that the incline is nice and greased and then I'm going to run this guy really fast and check the skew when it's running really fast electrical safety yada yada and there you go and it should be good so let's go ahead and stop it there we go all right Sounds pretty good. There's a little bit of a squealing, so I'm gonna pull the hood, check it out, and see what's all going on up inside it. Make sure that the drive belt, there's a belt that drives the main roller right there. Make sure that that one's good to go. Make sure it's not cracked and whatnot. But uh, there it is, not very complex. My printout is looking pretty good. This treadmill here looks like it's going to be an easy PM. Anyway, guys, I got a few other things I'm gonna to do to this treadmill, but I'm not gonna bore you with all that. Just wanted to show you some of the ins and outs and how to operate it because a lot of people uh, don't want to touch stress monitors and I don't get it. It's a 220 volt treadmill. They're really not that complex. One of the trends that I am seeing, not, not just that uh, e-stop button not being in the right location, I'm also seeing a trend where um, they're not greasing or lubricating the, the treadmill belt. It's a pretty common place in pretty much anywhere I go that's got treadmills, physical therapy locations, this is a cardiology clinic. There's a lot of places where they just historically don't have a lot of people that have lubricated the belt. And that is a big problem. It creates undue wear and tear on the motor, the drive electronics. I mean, you never know the physiology of the patient that's gonna be stepping on it. And because of that, you always have to make sure that that belt is in perfect tip-top condition. Anyway guys, hope you liked this video. Thanks for watching.